I did just like a little bit of spying. Through this, we can learn what Christy actually thinks because she won't come out and talk about it. Trans women versus real women, so that's transphobia on display. Official statement regarding sourcing, homeschool drama. I'm here for it. <laughs> Put commas in your sentences. I think if there was any question left for anybody, this answers it. Hi, my name is Hannah. Welcome back to my channel, Hannah Needs to Yell, and today I need to yell about, I've done it. I've cracked the code, I've solved the case. I have figured out what Raw Beauty Christie actually thinks about the LGBTQ plus community. In my opinion, allegedly based on research that I've done, do your own research. This is my speculation based on publicly available information within reason. If you're not sure exactly what I'm talking about, I'll refer you back to the past, I don't know, three months of online coverage related to Raw Beauty Christie. I will do a recap of this situation at the beginning of this video, but I have done other videos on it in the past, as well as creators like Peter Mon, Audra Reigns, other people who have followed this story pretty closely. So if you need all the information, go watch some of those videos. The briefest summary I can give of this situation is that yes, People have been wondering for months now what Raw Beauty Christie actually thinks about the LGBTQ plus community, among other things, because some troubling signs came out in early July and she has refused to address the many questions she has gotten afterward. So concerned viewers like you and me have had to speculate for a while now. Or if you have the kind of brain that I have, you've had to get creative in your investigative efforts to come up with the answer that Christy will not provide. This issue is very important for most of Christy's makeup community fan base, which is most of her fan base. As a primarily makeup YouTuber, Christy has built her brand and her wealth by creating content in a space that is meant to be inclusive. And because in her content, Christy uses techniques that were essentially created and invented by drag performers. And I think that she has referenced this in her past videos, as well as other marginalized groups that she seems to now be against. So where she should be showing huge respect, deference, and credit to people is she instead showing her true colors and aligning herself with groups and ideologies that want to shove them back into the closet forever how it seems. That sure would be problematic and a slap in the face to a lot of her audience, which seems to be why Christy has not come out and addressed this head on. So her silence creates an opportunity for someone like me to come along and try to answer the question that she won't answer, which I honestly believe that I have. And it's not the answer that you wish that she had. You'll see. Here's an outline of what you're in for in this video today. First, I'm going to recap this entire situation as briefly as I can, but you know me. If you're fully familiar with this situation already, you can feel free to skip through that recap. I only have a couple of new tidbits to add there, nothing really groundbreaking. Secondly, and for most of this video, I will be sharing with you what I found that I believe demonstrates and confirms Christie's beliefs on these matters. I did a little bit of sleuthing, a tiny bit of undercover spying, a good amount of research, and ultimately I believe I have found enough evidence to confidently say that Robbie D. Christie has become an anti-LGBT plus fundy Christian, which I have a lot of personal experience with as somebody who grew up fundy, and she may even be an activist in that direction, or somebody at least who shows a lot of support to those activists. I think this is important for her audience to know before they support a creator who may be donating their time, money, effort, and resources to causes that are anti them and their rights in this country and as a human in general. So I wanna talk about it. And now that you know what you're in for, first a recap and then the research, I think it's time to get into it. Quick housekeeping, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, set your notifications to all. I recently started a new job that is like overtaking my schedule. So while I'm figuring out if and how I'm gonna be able to continue doing YouTube, it means a lot to me if you can continue watching my stuff and you know, look back at my live tab. I have a lot of stuff there so that YouTube does not put me back on the you're inactive, so you're on the shadow ban list that I was on for a while. Also, speaking of rights, 
which I mentioned before. It's election season. Please check and make sure that you are registered to vote. And if you are not, please do register. Certain parts of America require you to be registered for a certain amount of time before you can go vote on voting day. So please just check. Register if you're not registered. Young people are the largest voting demographic in the United States right now. We can make a big difference. Your voice matters more now than ever before. Finally, I will attach to this video a fundraiser for recovery efforts from Hurricanes Milton and Helene. If you are as disturbed as I am by the news on these events, please donate anything that you can. Even a dollar helps, truly. All right, I think that's everything. Are you ready? Do you have a drink? Do you have a snack? Are you cozy? Are you ready to settle in? Good. Let's dive in. All right, let's recap what has been going on with Raw Beauty Christy for the past couple of months. If you're already aware, or if you don't care, again, please feel free to skip through this section. The quickest way that I feel I can recap this situation is this. In early July 2024, a bunch of evidence was compiled and posted in a live journal post and several Reddit threads that points to Raw Beauty Christy being at least anti-trans, if not anti-LGBT plus in general. Here are the dots that were connected by these posts and in my own research. In 2023, Raw Beauty Christie's sister, Katie, started a homeschool co-op cooperative called Family Learning Cooperative. In spring of 2024, Christie announced that she is building her sister a house on her large farm property. Christie also separately posted that she is planning to send her one and only son to a homeschool co-op when he starts school this fall, which is now. Now is October 10th, 2024. Finally, both Christy and the Family Learning Cooperative have posted images of the school group on Christy's property, hanging out with her, doing school things, farming things, learning about farming from Christy, hanging out in Christy's tree nut, which she has posted about relatively frequently, and the school even announcing in June that they're planning to move locations into this mysterious building that looks suspiciously like a building that Christy has on her property. So far, in my opinion, there's not really much to see here necessarily. This is all well within the realm of what is expected on-brand behavior from Raw Beauty Christy and her sister Katie. Christy has often expressed interest in homeschooling her son, and if your sister is running a homeschool, who do you trust more to educate your kid? So this was all fine and dandy until the events of the 4th of July, 2024. You see, at that time, Katie's homeschool, where Christy intends to send her son, walked in the 4th of July parade in their neighborhood. They then shared on their official school Facebook page a video showing smiling children and adults wearing matching shirts with Christian messages on them, waving American flags, riding on the float or walking alongside it, and most importantly, some kids and adults were carrying signs with the phrase and the hashtag, don't mess with our kids. That was the biggest, brightest red flag here. You see, hashtag don't mess with our kids is an activist group whose website reflects that they fight against public schools trying to indoctrinate kids with a trans agenda, which is not a real thing, but I don't wanna to digress too far in that direction. There is no mission statement on their website that outright states this, but their agenda is evident in all of the messaging on their website. However, if you do want clear confirmation of their mission, perhaps you can go to their vision page right up here. And maybe you can ask about exactly what their mission or their mission statement is at the live Zoom that takes place every Monday at 10 a.m. PST or noon central time using the passcode love to get in to that live Zoom. I'm not recommending that you go or don't go. Um, I'm just letting you know that that information is there, publicly available on their public website. There's something to think about. So that's right. Katie's homeschool group, where Christie's son is a student, posts images of them walking in the 4th of July parade, promoting America, Jesus, and an anti-trans organization, which believes in such literally unbelievable stories as this mom who claims her 12-year-old daughter was taken by transgender indoctrination in just one 90-minute after-school club, probably should be calling that daughter a son, and promotes fear-mongering such as the National Education Association believes your children belong to them to teach and indoctrinate in the ways of LGBTQ, social justice, and beyond. Don't believe us, they'll tell you in this unbelievable video. I wonder why so many of their resources are unbelievable. Hmm, 
These are the associations which are causing a lot of concern. And now, how do we know that this wasn't just Katie and her homeschool group just wilding out? without Christie's awareness. Um, there are two ways that we can surmise that. First of all, Raw Beauty Christie saw the video of the parade where all of these things were going on on the homeschool's Facebook page, and she gave the video a like, which obviously indicates that she likes everything taking place in the video, including these signs and their messages. And secondly, the video that she liked shows Christie's son present at the parade, and he looks exactly like Christy. There is no arguing that this is her son. He's walking in the parade with the group, so Christy may have even been present at the parade. While Christy herself is not shown in the footage or in the photos, if her four or five-year-old son is there at a parade, at least one of his parents <laughs> has to be around, right? So based on her support of this post, which shows support for this anti-trans activist group, it seems that Christy has outed herself and her true beliefs. That is, until suddenly, once this information was screenshot and shared and spread like wildfire on social media, mysteriously, a ton of these posts and sources disappeared. In my research, I could not find the Family Learning Cooperative Facebook page for the life of me. Their official Instagram page was also privated, and even their website has been changed. At the time that this controversy was blown up online, this is how the Upper Room Family Learning Cooperative described themselves. They say, we see Upper Room Family Learning Cooperative, I've neglected to say the full title this whole time, that is the title and you're gonna see it on their website. We see Upper Room Family Learning Cooperative as a lighthouse for this fallen world, a place of rescue from the darkness and perverseness of the broken public school system. I didn't know that the public school system was so dark and perverse. The mission is to provide a safe place for children to learn and grow in their relationship with God, building up a community of homeschoolers who are taking back their identities in Christ Jesus. In my opinion, the mention of identity is significant when we're talking about supporting an anti-trans group whose focus is obviously on gender identity, just saying. We pray to be a seed planting cooperation for the kingdom of heaven. We are also here to inform and equip other churches and or communities how to to of plant a school in your own area. They really needed a proofread. That's gonna be a common theme in this video. A lot of people who need to proofread their shit. The Lord told us we would be a blueprint for more schools to come. We have faith and are walking boldly with the word of our Father in our hearts. So that's pretty clearly some fundy activist shit. And let me just remind everybody in this moment here, I'm going to be mentioning Christianity and fundamentalism, fundy, and faith and stuff a lot throughout this video. I am not here to come for all of Christianity or all of religion. I am here to specifically talk about a group that I grew up as part of, fundamentalist evangelical Christianity, which I think has some harmful, severe, extreme, polarizing beliefs, which I think have already been demonstrated through this video and are going to continue to be. And as somebody who chose to leave that group, I do find it concerning when I see other people on the path toward being in that group, going all in on those extreme ideals, which as you can see, can be discriminatory at times. So if you're not part of that group, you don't need to be offended. If you are part of that group, I'd love to have a conversation. Email me. My, my description box has my email address. I'd love to chat. So that used to be the about page or the description of the Upper Room Family Learning Cooperative that was on their website at the time that this information was compiled and written about and shared on social media. Now let's look at what their current about page says. Now, here on October 10th of 2024, the About page on the Upper Room Family Learning Cooperative website says, The Upper Room FLC mission is to provide a safe place for children to learn and grow in their relationship with God. Walking aligned in their identity in Christ Jesus, we saw that before, they kept that part, but not all the part about being a refuge from the fallen world and the perverse public school system. We strive to partner with parents in the academic and spiritual education of their child, offering a well-rounded school year with intentional and high caliber curriculum. That's the only mention of their curriculum. We're going to talk more about it later in this video, don't you worry. Who we are slash aren't. We fully believe in academic and spiritual partnership with families as we come alongside a child. We are a collective of families that are in agreement that God should be brought back into the classroom and education 
of a child. Only in private education, because in public education, separation of church and state, right? That's in the constitution, right? We get that? Okay. We are a place where children will be affirmed in their God-given identities. Yet again, we're talking about identity. I don't love the frequent, not so subtle references to the boogeyman that does not exist of schools trying to change kids into being trans or whatever they think, whatever they think is going on. Perhaps public schools inform kids that multiple gender identities exist, multiple sexual orientations exist, just so the kids can be aware of what's going on in the world around them. But information is not indoctrination, unless you're paranoid, like these people seem to be. Just putting that out there. Okay. Next they say, we are like a lighthouse, a beacon of hope, a rescue, because they think there is something to be rescued from. We are not a school. We educate your kids, we use a curriculum, we do activities that are meant for education, but like, we're not like other schools. We're like different. Instead, we are a family of families contributing time toward our children's education and academic and spiritual wellness. We do not provide letter grades like those evil schools would. Instead, we evaluate progress through unit assessments, aka tests, within our curriculum books, curriculum that they use, like a school does. We are not standard-centered. Instead, we are student-centered. Vague, we do not hand out report cards. Instead, we partner with each student and meet with parents regularly to review slash discuss academic progression. You know what a report card is? A review of a kid's academic progression. It's a report card. It's a report of how they're doing. They've gone so far in the direction of trying not to be like other schools that they just ended up being like other schools. Anyway, <laughs> What a difference between the previous statement about the school and this statement. And speaking of changes, the Upper Room FLC website is continuing to change and has even changed within the past month while I was making this video. While I was doing my due diligence research for this video, I wanted to make 100% sure that I could draw a very clear connecting line between Robbie D. Christie, this Upper Room FLC homeschool group, and Christie's sister Katie as all being part of this together. Because at the time I was making this video, it was September, a bunch of the resources had been deleted, as I said. In the process of connecting the three dots of Christie, the homeschool, and Katie, Christie's sister, I went to the website of the Upper Room Family Learning Cooperative to see if they had any staff members listed. It's a very sparse website. There's like nothing there. The only place I could find staff listed was the Support Us page. And it's these two smiling ladies listed as the co-directors, Katie Lynch and Elizabeth Chruton, Chruton, I don't know how to say it properly. Once I saw that, I set out on a mission to ensure that the Katie Lynch who was mentioned here is the sister of Robbie D. Christie, because I don't know their last names. I don't need to know. If you know, please don't put it in my comments. The last name alone was not enough for me to confirm exactly what I needed to know. Also, I had never seen what Katie, Robbie D. Christie's sister looked like before this whole situation. What am I doing in this screen recording? <laughs> what I was able to do is I went to YouTube, to Robbie D. Christie's YouTube channel, and I looked up videos that involved the word Kate or Katie. I found this one from when Christie was telling her friends and family that they were pregnant. And I saw this. In the description of the video, one of the people Christie says she is making the announcement to that day is her sister and looking at this face and looking at this face. For me, that was enough confirmation that these are the same person. These people are connected. The reason there's a lot of smoke here is because there is fire, in my opinion. I mean, I mean, just, just look at, just look at this, look at this <laughs> smiling face and tell me that's not the same person, you know? Okay. I brought this up because I recently noticed that this page on the Upper Room FLC website has changed. Instead of the support page looking like this at the top with the photo of Katie and Elizabeth, now it looks like this. We have no more lighthouse. We have no more picture of the ladies. We also seem to have a different name. Now it's Upper Room Academy, but just on the support us page. We do still have the names of the co-directors, Katie Lynch and Elizabeth Chriton, but we no longer have their photo, which is fair. Like, listen, making changes to your website is allowed. It's your business, do what you want with it, but I'm just saying it's a lot of changes for people who have nothing to hide. And if I was them, one of the things I would want to hide is this typo. People need to proofread their stuff. This says, <laughs> thank you for supporting the work of Upper Room Academy. Your conurbation helps reach the community where we serve. I think they meant contribution. Conurbation has nothing to do with a donation or a financial gift. Just something to keep in mind. Speaking of having nothing to hide, 
Christy herself has removed school-related posts from her socials, and she's also been deleting comments and blocking people who ask about this. Because, yeah, people are rightfully wondering if this was all some big misunderstanding, or if, after years of seeming like an LGBT plus ally online, Christy actually agrees with the anti-trans organization referenced in the signs her sister's school was holding where she is sending her son to go be educated. People wonder about that. They care about that. But apparently, Christy has deemed that question unworthy of answering. So where does Christy's silence leave her frustrated fans, collaborators, and community who want to care about her, but care as much, if not more, about the people she seems to be prejudiced against? It leaves us to find our own answers by getting creative and doing our own digging. Which I did, basically. A few weeks ago, it occurred to me that we can discover what Christy really thinks by investigating what she is allowing her son to learn at her sister Katie's private home school, the Upper Room Family Learning Cooperative, or Upper Room Academy, depending on which page of the website you believe. Knowing a little bit about who Christy is, I know that she would have made an educated decision about where to send her only son, who she fought tooth and nail to be able to have, and who she remains very protective over to this day. Christy would have made the educated, informed, careful decision to send her son to the Upper Room Family Learning Co-op, doing so because, in my opinion, he will be taught the same things that she believes while he's there, instead of like in a public school teaching perverse and dangerous things like acceptance of other people who are different from you. So once I came to this realization, I decided that I needed to figure out exactly what it is that this school teaches. The incredibly sparse Upper Room website has no information about what exactly they teach other than being a Christian school. So I went slightly undercover and I emailed them to ask about it. And after a few weeks of waiting, I got a reply. And that's where our journey begins today. So now that we're all caught up on the story so far, please join me as I investigate and react to the homeschool curriculum that is being used at the Upper Room Family Learning Co Cooperative or Upper Room Academy, depending on the website page, thereby discovering what Raw Beauty Christie really believes. I know it might sound a little bit boring to investigate curriculum, but it is quite a roller coaster ride. There is drama that I was not expecting, there's awful punctuation, there's outright discrimination, and so much more. So join me. The recap is over. Let's dig into the new shit. I'm going to start with showing you the email that I sent to flc.upperroom at gmail.com, the email address listed publicly on their public website. I put my fundy hat back on and I put several, dare I say, dog whistles in there that like, I am a sincere Christian and I'm just really looking for the right place to send my kids. I said, hello, I hope this email finds you well. I'm looking for a homeschool cooperative in the area and based on your website, your program looks like it fits my kids' needs. There's nothing on their website, but whatever. I just wanted to ask what curriculum you used before I applied, just to be sure it's right for my family. I have been interested in the ACE curriculum and a couple others. I'd love to learn more about the books you use. I referenced the ACE curriculum here because it is a very specific curriculum that a lot of fundy homeschools use. It is a curriculum that I discovered through my research that I did for the Troubled Teen Industry Fundy Origins live stream that I did. Let me know if you want me to make it into a video. But it is a curriculum that was heavily promoted by Lester Roloff, one of the most abusive figures in evangelical fundy Christian history. He and his cohorts and his uh, pupils started these Christian reform schools where kids would basically go to get T-O-R-T-U-R-E-D into behaving. J just, it's, it's absolutely awful. So I bring it up in this email to prove how fundy I am, essentially. It's, this is the dog whistle of this is what I'm interested in. I'm interested in some very strict shit for my imaginary kids in this email about my imaginary family going to imaginary homeschool. I end with thanks and sorry for the Sunday email. No rush to respond on this Sabbath day of rest. In God's love, Hannah. I sent that on Sunday, August 11th. You will notice they did not respond to me <laughs> until Saturday, August 31st. So this is the response from Upper Room FLC and they say, hi, Hannah on August 31st. I wanted to sincerely apologize for the delay in response. We have had a busy summer preparing for the 24 to 25 school year and your email got pushed down in our folders. 
thanks. For our core, okay, this is where, it, get ready. For our core language arts, math, and handwriting curriculum, we use the good and the beautiful. The core is reading, writing, and arithmetic. For supplemental curriculum, history, science, etc. That's right, those are supplemental. We pull from Gather Round, Prager U, Heroes of the Faith, and other biblically sound curricula slash resources. This is why I framed my email outing myself as severely fundy, because had I not, they may not have mentioned Prager U. ACE is one of the most extreme curriculums, essentially. Once you mention something that far over on the spectrum, then people feel comfortable saying like, oh, you're that kind of Christian? Here's all the Christian Christianity that we're Christianing. It says, we are still currently selecting applications with our school year beginning on Tuesday, September 17th, kinda late. If you would like more information or have any further questions, please let me know. I would be more than happy to help. Blessings, the Family Care Coordinator at Upper Room FLC. So this is enough information for me to go down a deep, deep dive. And we're going to take a look at all of these curriculum that they mentioned because Here's the thing. It is an important Christian belief, especially in alt-right extremist fundy land, to train up your child in the way he should go, so that when he is old, he will not depart from it. Through these Christian education programs, you are not just teaching your kid about reading, writing, arithmetic, history, science. You are also teaching them about the Lord through Heroes of Faith, Prager U, which has a lot of religious stuff with it, other biblically sound curricula slash resources. That is their criteria. Through this, we can learn what Christy actually thinks because she won't come out and talk about it. So let's take a look. My cat came to join us. Everybody say hi. This is Jupiter if you never met him before. There you can see his sweet little face. All right, let's start with their core curriculum, the good and the beautiful, which covers their language arts, math, and handwriting. This is the website for the good and the beautiful. I've just brought us over to the About Us page. Let's start with the creator, who we are. Jenny Phillips, creator and owner of the Good and the Beautiful Homeschool curriculum, began the unexpected journey from musician to homeschool mom when she became concerned about the literature her children were reading. After spending hours and hours researching available language arts resources, she hadn't found what she was looking for, a comprehensive program that was academically strong and included writing, grammar, spelling, nature, God, and wholesome books, while also being a powerful character building and beautiful experience for both parents and children. With a degree in English and a passion for good literature, good literature? If you have a degree in English and the adjective you can come up with is good for literature, okay, that should set the bar as well as experience in professional writing, magazine editing, and managing a technical writing department, Jenny was up to the task of creating a language arts curriculum for her children that met all of her requirements. You'll notice she does not have a degree in education. She has a degree in English, experience with a lot of professional writing, no education experience. She wrote the first language arts editions without any intention of selling them or creating a company. They were for her family's use. After Jenny was inspired to offer her language arts courses as free downloads online, families found the joy and power that these courses offered. And The Good and the Beautiful was born. Now, The Good and the Beautiful has grown into a large, diverse group of talented writers and creators all over the world who share Jenny's vision. Educators? Any educators? Huh? <laughs> okay. Hundreds of thousands of families use the curriculum today, and the subjects offered have expanded to include math, science, history, handwriting, electives, reading books, and more. I'm gonna be honest with you. This curriculum is not the worst on this list. It looks cute, it's not preachy, it's just wholesome. I don't have a problem with wholesome if it helps your kids meet the learning goals they need to meet at the time they need to meet them. And I don't know enough about education and standards, God forbid. Like if you're an educator in the comments, please let me know what you think. We're gonna look at some pieces of this curriculum. I have some concerns as a not school educator looking at the curriculum, but at the end of the day, it's not this preachy, fundy, over-Christian thing. I don't know why this is not the main curriculum that Katie is using with her 
kids, with her students. It includes science and history and electives and like a full course of all the different subjects. It was a specific choice to only use this curriculum, the good, wholesome one that doesn't preach at you and slap you in the face with the Bible, to teach math and language arts and handwriting, which are probably the most non-controversial parts of school. History, very controversial. Science, very controversial if you're a Christian. Social studies, if you even do that, very controversial. And when it came to those subjects, she chose the fundy resources for those. The Good and the Beautiful Language Arts is still at the core of the company and has become the most searched for homeschool language arts curriculum in the world, which does not mean as much as you might think that it means. The Good and the Beautiful is leading a movement to return children to a love of wholesome literature that strengthens families and creates beautiful hearts and minds. That's right, literature, is what creates your heart and mind. If we were to explain our approach in two words, those two words would be, what works? It's not a, it's not a question like, what works? It's an exclamation. Our approach is, what works? So, she says, what works to make learning joyful? What works in teaching strong academics? What are strong academics exactly? Good question. I don't know. She doesn't know. She doesn't have an education degree. What works to help children become good writers and good thinkers? Again, with this overuse of the word good, you have an English degree. Huh? Just lets you know the level of what's going on here. What works to help children appreciate wholesome, top quality literature? Top quality does not always align with wholesome. And who is the judge? <laughs> who is the judge of what is top quality literature? Who is the judge of what are these strong academics? Is it just you or are there actual educators on your team? What works to bring children closer to God and to their families? The answers to these questions drive how we form our curriculum. Five pillars of the good and the beautiful homeschool curriculum. Pillar one, appreciation for God, family, nature, and wholesome art and literature. Art is not supposed to only be wholesome. I'm gonna lose my mind. Art always has been and always will be a form of expression, often a form of protest, especially it's a form of peaceful protest because there are a lot of other forms of protest that are not allowed and socially acceptable. Art is meant to be disruptive. It is meant to make people think. It is meant to evoke strong emotions. It is not meant to be wholesome. It is meant to be expressive and provocative. This is crazy. <laughs> Coming from someone who has an English degree, you have a degree in understanding what I just said. So what are you doing? <laughs> God above. The ignorance and the entitlement as well to like, all I'm going to teach my kid about is the good things in life. Homeschool is not just about checking off all the subjects to be taught each day, although structure matters to make sure that they're learning everything they need to learn, but who am I? Not, not someone with an English degree. It's about shaping children's hearts and minds and above all, leading them closer to God. And that's important to notice. Homeschool is about leading kids to God. It's not necessarily about education that will carry them through their adult life and enable them to like do jobs in society. Our non-denominational Christian curriculum is rich with nature, beautiful art, and literature that supports faith, character building, and strong families. I appreciate that it is a non-denominational Christian curriculum, and having looked at a couple of samples, I would describe it that way, which means it is not a fundy curriculum, but I also don't like this <laughs> description of what their focus is, essentially. Pillar two, structure and strong academics. Learning should be fun and creative while also being academically solid and thorough. Our intentional and planned curriculum is thorough and academically robust, leaving no holes in your child's academic foundation. That is not a description. That is a bunch of fluff. What are you basing your rubrics on? Like, what is what? What is it? It's not described. It's just, we just, we just think this is good learning. This is going to be very good for your good child to good learn through. Pillar three, easy to teach lessons with short teaching times. God forbid school should take a long time. As if school is not also a preparation for adult life when you're likely going to go work a nine to five or eight to four or 10 to six, whatever job where you have a solid eight hours in a row that you have to pay attention and do what you need to do. And you need to build up that endurance for how to fucking focus at your job. And that's part of what school and a school day is about. No, no, 
Teaching times don't need to take long. Not that every job is that kind of eight hour shift. You at least need to be able to focus for a long period of time at whatever your shift is. You need to build that. You do not need teaching experience or knowledge to give your child a strong academic education, she says, justifying why she wrote this curriculum having no experience in education. We maximize learning by teaching multiple concepts in each activity or lesson, reducing busy work and teaching time so that you and your child have time for the many other opportunities that homeschooling brings. School assignments are not busy work. They're different modalities to make sure that your kid thoroughly understands what they're learning and can apply it to different contexts. It's rarely just busy work. Pillar four, affordable homeschool curriculum. Families save around $2,000 a year with this curriculum. Pillar five, balanced homeschool approach. In short, we focus not on one educational philosophy, but rather on what works extremely vague. Because our curriculum is so balanced and does not lean toward any extremes in homeschooling, hundreds of thousands of families with different views on education have found the good and the beautiful to be a wonderful match for their homeschools. So basically they're like, we're taking the safest possible road that will please the most people. The thing is, you do have one educational philosophy that above all, homeschooling is about leading children closer to God. So I understand if you're saying like, we're not extremely extremist in the Christianity side of the homeschooling, but the educational side, which is most of it, right, because it's school, in terms of educational philosophies that work, it should be based on some kind of educational theory, child development, child psychology, not just like, well, I like this, so I think this is what we're gonna do. Join us in our mission as we make faith-based homeschooling easy and inexpensive and help children learn to recognize, appreciate, and seek out what is good and beautiful in literature, learning, and life. So we are going to help you learn to recognize what is good and beautiful. They don't get to decide what's good. They don't get to decide what's beautiful. No, 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 we're gonna teach you what good is and what beauty is. They've won a lot of homeschool awards, which are useless. So I downloaded some of this curriculum and I wanna show it to you so you can see exactly what we're talking about here. So I chose two different subjects to look at. This is one of the subjects that Family Learning Co-op is using their math curriculum. This is Math 1, which I think is essentially first grade. The Math 1 course book is 331 pages long. Here we have some indication of who is contributing to this. This is created by the Simply Good and Beautiful math team. Don't know who that is, but it's reviewed by Deanna Dreher with a PhD in mathematics. Tamara Stark, who has a master's in mathematics education, thank God. Alaya Criddle has a master's in mathematics. Bailey Nearing has a BS in mathematics education. You have some educators. I hope that their voices were listened to. And here's your table of contents for Math 1, which is, like I said, I believe it's around first grade. This looks like kind of normal math things to learn. Somebody who <laughs> knows about education, take a look at this. Let me know what you think of it. As far as it being good and beautiful and whatever, like there's cute artwork, yeah. And I will say looking through it, it's not a bunch of preaching. They have examples about dog bones instead of it being about like, how many loaves of bread did Jesus multiply with the fish? You know what I mean? Like it could have been much more preachy than it is. It gives instructions to the parent read to the child. I'm going to describe a fish and you point to it. Point to a fish on the right of the coral to help them determine right and left. Tells you what to do to teach your kid because you don't know how to teach because you're a parent and you're homeschooling your kid. Your first grader, your foundational, most important years of schooling. Here's a little bit of God. God gave us 12 months each year that have changing seasons. No, calendars were created <laughs> in ancient history. Are there changing seasons? Yes. God created the world. Sure, he created seasons. And that's not even what he created. If we're going this creation route, he created the planet Earth, which spins on an axis and moves around the sun. As it spins, it leans. And that is what causes seasons to happen. That's all. God didn't say. And now there is January. Like you can just introduce a calendar and like what it means to read a calendar without being like, God created the months when he didn't. Like, okay, whatever. So this is a math one course book. Take a look through any educators in the audience. I have, I have a very smart and hydrated and compassionate audience. So I'm sure 
you all can look at this and tell me what makes sense. This is included in the curriculum that Rob Beauty Christie is sending her son to learn at her sister Katie's homeschool co-op. This is marine biology, three through eight science unit study. So marine biology created by the good and the beautiful team. Table of contents. Oh, wait, I'm so sorry. Created by the good and the beautiful team. There's no review of people with a bunch of PhDs and masters in this unit. Are you kidding me? We only want to do that for math. One of the most concrete things in this universe. But for marine biology, the thing that we creationists have a very particular opinion about, we're not going to have anybody educated review our curriculum. So does this come with God created the whales or what? There's no description of like, this was reviewed by X, Y, or Z. Let me look at the back. Maybe the back of the book has it. No, just different kind of whales. No peer review by anybody with a master's or a PhD. If they did one, they probably wouldn't be unironically calling an orca a killer whale in this educational textbook, marine biology textbook. That tells me what I need to know. If you go on the Good and the Beautiful website, if you want to subscribe to their email list, you can choose a curriculum piece to be sent to you. So I, I had two email addresses, I, so I got two curriculum pieces for free. So I wasn't able to look at the whole curriculum there, but that is enough of a sample to me to be like, I wouldn't send my kid to learn this curriculum. It is the better curriculum on this list. However, again, somebody with an English degree who describes literature as good, I, I, my, my, hmm, my red flags are raised. The next curriculum resource that was listed in the email from Upper Room was Gather Round. So let's take a look at that. Gather Round Homeschool, and this is a modular math unit coming soon. Gather Round was listed as a place that they get curriculum for supplemental subjects from. So we can see a life skills class, a music class. Oh, I just missed it. There was one that said growing up with God. So it's a Christian. It's a Christian. Confirmed. All right, let's do about. Hi there. Welcome to Gather Round Homeschool. My name is Rebecca Spooner, owner of homeschoolon.com, author of Journal Me Organized and More Than Words Bible Curriculum from Master Books and Speaker. Sorry, that's all one sentence. <laughs> oh boy, oof. Okay, I am a homeschool mom of five young children between grade one and grade seven, and I have spent the past eight years home. You've got to learn your punctuation, people. I had a picture in my head of what I wanted homeschooling to be, then I discovered reality was far from it, and the real tragedy happened. I bought the lie that that picture wasn't possible. Homeschooling was just going to be chaotic and messy. What are your qualifications to write this curriculum? Did you, did you write it? Who wrote it? For a year, God has been drawing me into a picture of homeschooling, and I have been podcasting about my discontent and exploring what true homeschool freedom looks like. I tried completely unschooling, but I felt like an utter failure. There are too many kids with too many interests, and I am tired guys. Comma. You needed at least two commas added to this sentence. Oh my God. These are the people teaching your children, Christy. They don't know how to use commas in 2024 as adults. Just saying. Then this year, as I was praying and seeking him, God, for my business, this idea literally popped into my head. You needed a comma there after business. I feel like I can still hear the words resounding in my mind, comma, clear as day. That, that comma was good. Quote, what if you could homeschool all of your kids together, period? Is it a question or not? Ugh! This is the easy stuff. It's so, okay, okay, okay. This is how you present yourself to the world. Would you send your kid to learn a curriculum written by this person? Let me get, let me just see. I, I got too distracted by, by whatever that was. I started scribbling furiously in my notebook. Units, all subjects, all grades, cohesive, engaging, challenging, curiosity-driven, collaborative learning. So these are just ideas. Pictures of the homeschool I always dreamed of. More than that though, I had hope. Depending on where you put the comma in that, in that phrase, it could mean two different things. At least two. Gather Round Homeschool was born in a flurry developed over a month. It took one month to develop a curriculum. A sample was put together, a store was opened, and it was available for pre-sale. Gather Round Homeschool is not just a curriculum, it is really an entirely new way to homeschool. Targeted lessons that challenge and inspire curiosity in our students and are age slash stage appropriate. How do you know? You end this article, Rebecca Spooner. Inspired, called, equipped. 
Usually, where she put inspired called equipped, that's where people would put their credentials. You know, education, PhD, mathematics, masters, or whatever. Hers is inspired, called, equipped. That's what qualifies her because she believes that she had an idea that came from the voice of God to homeschool. The coding is, if God trusts me, you should too. Otherwise, you're being a bad Christian. And what I'll also say, God didn't say, write your own homeschool curriculum. According to her, God said, what if you could homeschool all your kids together? That in no way says, write your own homeschool curriculum, Rebecca. Clearly, if you're struggling this much with commas, then I don't think you are qualified. Anyway, there's a statement of faith on this website. As an author and speaker, I have been getting more and more requests to know what I believe, and rightfully so. You want to know the foundation, the root of who I am, and what I might be subtly or not so subtly coming through in my writing and speaking. So if you've been curious, this is what I believe. Okay, so the first six bullet points here, I don't really have anything to say about them. They're just kind of boilerplate Protestant beliefs. So I'm going to let you pause to read because it's going to take me forever to read it with nothing to add. I had a couple comments starting at number seven. I believe in the present ministry of the Holy Spirit who convicts, restores, comforts, reveals, and empowers the believer in his, her walk. So it's Pentecostal-ish, perhaps. I believe that God still speaks today. I believe in the power of prayer. I believe in the gifts of the Spirit. So some kind of, yep, Pentecostal. Although the, I've, I've heard from my Catholic friend, and she's very like devoutly Catholic after growing up in the same church that I did, that even like Catholics, some Catholics believe in the charisma of the Holy Spirit and believe in like gifts of the Spirit. So it's interesting to me. But this is not Catholic. What she's describing is not Catholicism. So that leads me toward it's probably some kind of Pentecostalism, which is what I grew up in. This woman's beliefs are relevant because as she said herself at the beginning, they come through in her writing and they are probably therefore a window into what Christy believes and that's certainly a window into what's being taught at the school. As you can see, my camera angle of myself is covering the words, so I'll leave you to read the rest on her website, which I will link. But I will leave in my continued comments on her continued poor writing. Who would choose to read this woman's writing. Like, I'm so sorry, Becky, but like, learn what commas do, because that was awful. From a science slash curriculum perspective, oh my god, I am young earth, though I don't believe any of us will know the true timeline until we get to heaven. I am okay with the unknown and the mystery of not understanding everything about God. I love to talk about the what ifs and the could haves, but ultimately I rest in God's awesome omniscience and my feeble understanding. I don't stand on a rock of my own theology, but I'm constantly growing and learning new things about our amazing creator that blow my original ideologies away. I don't want to put God in a box of my own understanding. He's way too big for that. So that does not tell me what you teach kids. This is what you believe. What do you teach kids? The gather round story is her story. That's what we just clicked on. Samples, full unit samples. There's an Africa unit, an ancient civilizations unit, Antarctica unit, artists, Asia, Australia, botany, careers and trades, chemistry. So these are subjects. Earth science, let's go for it. Because this is one, science is one of their supplementals at um, Raw Beauty Christie Katie's co-op. So what, what do we have to do to look at this? Try a free one day sample of our earth science unit. View the resources. I have to become a member. Damn it. So if you're interested, you can get a free one day sample. I feel like I already know it's not going to be good. Let's look at the FAQ. We've put together a list. <laughs> what is this? Good. A list of common questions we hear from our customers. Check it out and send us an email with any questions that we don't answer here. What is this? Gather Round Homeschool is a curriculum designed to be all your subjects but math for every grade from preschool to grade 12. The homepage says modular math is on the way. It doesn't give you extension activities. It comes with six individual student notebooks that vary in level and give targeted grammar, spelling, writing, art, reading and comprehension, geography, science, social studies, history, Bible, and more lessons, all on one central theme that you introduce in a beautiful full color teacher's guide. So these are themed units. It's not even just teaching what's going on. I'm not teaching you history. I'm teaching you history from an angle of a specific theme that I'm tying together. Huh? Who wrote this? Who wrote the curriculum? Is it you, Becca? This is my question. 
Is this Christian or secular? The lessons are Christian, though we also recommend adding more than words, Rebecca's Bible curriculum through Masterbooks. First of all, the biblical approach in the units is more of a worldview and touch on, not in-depth teaching. We use scripture for copy work to learn spelling and there are Bible connections and sometimes it is touched on through the readings, but it doesn't go into specific teaching. And that's appropriate that there should be a separate Christian curriculum if you want to dive into Christianity. How would you list this for high school credits? Based on the traditional Carnegie unit method, which bases credits off of hours, you would operate on a system of one credit for a one-year course. Under that method, your student would receive the following if you completed a minimum of 140 gather round for high school during the school year. Again, teachers in the chat, let me know if this looks like what you're supposed to accomplish in one school year. Can I pay, I don't care about payment, don't care about print versus digital, notebooks, materials, refund policy. Who wrote the curriculum? That's my FAQ. Did you write this, Rebecca? Submit and edit. So if you, th <laughs> if you think there's something wrong with her curriculum, you can email her about it and she'll edit it. That shows you the confidence that she has in her work. See guys, isn't this education so much better than the perverse public school system? If you trust just like any old parent to tell you something is wrong with your curriculum, you probably shouldn't be writing a curriculum. I can't find anything about who wrote this curriculum, not in the FAQs, not in the story, not in the shop. Official statement regarding sourcing, oof. Ooh, drama. On February 23rd, 2023, it came to our attention that a direct competing curriculum company had created a nearly hour long damaging video condemning us for our most recent US history unit. Even without the use of our name, it was immediately clear that they were speaking of our company and many people started emailing in. The video called into question the credibility, not only of our most recent US history six curriculum, but our credibility in general. Yeah your website calls into question your credibility in general. In response, we have received angry, offended, fearful, and questioning emails and comments from our customers demanding a response. The fact that our credibility has been called into question and that our customers did in fact deserve a response prompted us to sleep on it, pray about it, and then release a public statement. Jonathan and I went live on February 24th to address the concerns, but it seemed that to many this was not considered good enough as they wanted specific rebuttals. Some of the examples submitted in the competitor's video. Yo. We are aware of the fact that we are not going to convince everyone, but we thought a written response may be more clear for those who are still doubting our credibility based off the damage that has already been done. Homeschool drama, I'm here for it. <laughs> Please note that we welcome criticism and we thank God for this opportunity to reevaluate how we can make Gather Round even better. While I will give some context and understanding about our sources below, we are committed to excellence and in an effort to restore confidence, we'll make sure to include even more of our cross references in the future. So this is about their US history curriculum that they got a lot of heat. What makes a good source? This is such a debatable question. Not really. Everything has bias, everything has opinions. Everything has opinions? What is that sentence? This is something that we talk about in detail in US History 6. In fact, in Lesson 15, students are encouraged to see if they can find the author's bias in their gather round book. No history book, even a primary source, is written without a perspective. A perspective is different than bias, ma'am. My greatest challenge with this unit was to thoroughly understand both extremes and present all the angles, leaving room as much as possible. Put commas in your sentences for you to come up with your own conclusions rather than me being the trusted source that just told you what to believe with guided facts, the true definition of propaganda. So now finally from this drama response piece, I'm understanding how this curriculum is written. It is her, Rebecca, writing this curriculum, doing a bunch of research, it would be as if I, Hannah, sitting here in my room, just did a bunch of research about US history, compiled it all into a PDF, and was like, this is school now. This, here you go. This is the history of America based on me Googling, sitting here and Googling. Teach your kids. What? What? That's, that's the picture she's painting here, in my opinion. Oh my God. Just because something ends in .gov or .edu doesn't make it a trusted or reliable source. .edu, I agree. .gov, if you don't trust the government, then sure. But I, it's, mm -hmm. okay. Even if that is what a college or university would look for. Uh-huh. Almost as if educated people know 
what good sources are. Part of the reason that we homeschool is that much of our educational system and verbiage of our society and even much of our government and the overall system is left wing and progressive. Literally not true. If the system was left wing and progressive, America would look very different right now. Often not making it the highest or most unbiased source of information. The highest source of information? Proofread your work. Each source must be then questioned, tested, and considered. Just because someone was there, quote unquote, in a primary source does not mean that what they write is accurate. Are you kidding me? Dude. <laughs> what? Just because a person was there and I witnessed an event doesn't mean that what they wrote is accurate, but the Bible is very accurate because the Holy Spirit inspired it and Noah was there when the rain fell on the earth and he built the ark and he went in there with the animals and that is true. That is what happened because Noah said so. No, because Moses said so. Writing about Noah. Help. Who? This is, this is the quality of education that Rob Beauty Christie's child is going to get, guys. Who? As such, we must look into multiple sources, sure, and often history is most understood long after it has been judged, all sides considered, and carefully assessed by secondary sources, professionals, intellectuals, and yes, even the common man with no degrees on their shelves. Aha! That's the truth, isn't it, Rebecca? You don't have a degree in education or apparently any degree. There's a reason people major in this shit. There's a reason that you need certifications to teach. Googling resources is not enough, even if you cross check and double whatever. Okay, I've heard what I need to hear about the quality of this education. I'm gonna read a little bit farther just to see if there's any other uh, revelations in here. What sources does Gather Round use? Conservative funding. Not every piece of information that is in our material is sourced. Okay, thank you. Sometimes we hire researchers with PhDs or degrees, but if they have PhDs or degrees, then they should know to source their shit. That does not excuse, what? Where possible, we write from experience and our own knowledge on a topic, and sometimes things are common knowledge that do not need to be cited. That's, that's not, that's not what citation is for. We never include anything, even our own experience or knowledge, without cross-referencing every piece of information to make sure that what we publish is reliable, up-to-date, and trustworthy, except for when we don't source our materials because it's common knowledge and does not need to be cited. And because where possible, we write from experience and our own knowledge. So which is it? Which is it? Becca Boo, on top of our due diligence, ah, we pray over every lesson we write, submitting it to God and asking him for the truth to be revealed. God told her the truth of US history. And that's what she wrote in her curriculum. Help. God above. We do have a policy of using .gov and .edu sites wherever possible, and where not, we have our fact checkers corroborate facts and information on at least two to three other sites to make sure that what is written is accurate. Are those sites that they're cross-referencing with good? Because if you can't find a .gov or a .edu, like, what are those that you're cross-referencing with? Who are your fact checkers? Are, is it you? Our fact checkers, is that just yourself? Do we get every single detail right every time? No, I wish that were possible. You know, it can be possible if you have a larger team that's not asking God what history was. When you have documents, you have history to tell you what history was. What I can tell you is that when an issue is brought to our attention, we listen with humility and do our best to act swiftly when something needs to be corrected. As an extra layer of accountability and accuracy, we often subject our units to review, uh, for review to outside opinions. And because I didn't look at the units themselves, I'm not able to, to double check if that's listed within the unit, like a source page or, or anything like that. But also the samples that are available are one day of a lesson. I don't even think that would include like the index at the back with their sources listed anyways. So there's no way for me to see without buying the curriculum what it is and what sources are listed and who if if it lists who are the fact checkers and who are the researchers with phds and who are the reviewers that she often not always sends the units to you use cnn youtube and other untrustworthy sources some of the sources that are used particularly in our u.s history 6 unit are such things as media articles youtube videos or even opinion pieces if you're presenting something as a fact of history and pulling it from an opinion piece, 
that's a problem. Hopefully I don't need to explain to you why, Becca. Some of these videos or articles that are referred to in our units are from historians with degrees who have channels or blogs that teach people about their area of expertise. So what you need to do then, as a writer of a school curriculum, those historians should have their sources listed in their video description. If they don't, you email them and you ask them, what are your sources? I'm writing a curriculum. I want to get to the, the bottom, the most direct source. I liked your video. I think it was illuminating. What are your sources so I can include your sources in my work? And people are usually, especially historians talking about their expertise, should be fine to share their sources. Other videos, essentially, such as the case in a few in U.S. History 6 are watched simply to gain an understanding of some of the extremes and, yes, opinions that the public has in order to clearly express two different viewpoints or perspectives on the matter and paint a broader picture of how history is interpreted by the people in general. That's only okay if that's what you say in the book. If you put it in there as fact, then that's where the problem lies. As to the claims about, quote, many, many, many mistakes and misinformation, unquote, in our books. Okay, I'm not reading all of this. As to the claim about us using no primary sources, this is false. There are many government websites that are used in the sources. In that lesson alone, the sources list the FBI website as one of our sources used. Proofread your sentences. Both primary and secondary sources were consulted in our research and fact-checking. In summary, if you have done some of my units... Oh, boy. If you've done some of my units, specifically the ones I have written, you know me. You know my heart. You know that I write carefully in a balanced way and always with God at the center of it all. That's not how you write an educational curriculum. You know what should be at the center of a curriculum? Learning, education, accurate information being given to the student. It's not about your heart. I'm so sorry. It's not about like, but I'm a nice person and I mean well. When you're educating children, I don't know how many people buy this curriculum, so I don't know how widespread it is. It's, apparently it's widespread enough that somebody made a video about how much it sucks. If you know that what you write is going to be taught to hundreds of children as fact, if not thousands of children, if not, I don't, you know, I don't know how, how widespread this is. You either need to include a teaching guide that is so specific about these types of things that any moron parent, not that parents are not morons, but if there was a moron parent could read and understand what you're saying about, I present both sides. I want you to discuss with your child. I want you to take into context that this is an opinion piece and it influenced the way that this was perceived in the moment, not necessarily what it actually was. You know, if you put that in, in the teacher guide for the, for the parent, then I'm sure people wouldn't be upset about it. This is not a good curriculum. This is like, this is just like a woman doing some Googling, in my opinion. So where does that leave you? If you haven't read US History 6 yet, I urge you to do that. Sit down before reading it to your kids and test it for yourself, as you always should in this situation. And may we, as the body of Christ, begin to grow in our discernment and confidence so that not every voice sways us one way or another. May we learn to stand on our own two feet, trust our own decisions and the things we have seen, and yes, my goodness, test everything with his word. So that's her way of saying, I'm standing up for what I did. After saying, we welcome criticism and thank God for this opportunity to reevaluate how we can make Gather Round even better. So did you reevaluate or are you standing on what you did? So there is not enough information about this curriculum for me to trust it, that's for sure. If anything, there's a lot of information that leads me to believe it is bad. <laughs> this is, in my opinion, a highly untrustworthy curriculum. I don't know why it's being used, other than the fact that it's Christian, but that shouldn't be the only qualification that's required for what to teach your child. Let's look at the next thing really quick. This one is a quick one, I promise. So in the email from Upper Room, they said that one of their supplemental topics is history, and they included in their list of resources, Heroes of the Faith. So that leads me to believe the history that they are teaching supplementally is the history of the church, the history of Christians in America, because this is the Heroes of the Faith book series that I was able to find. There's a couple of different books or book series by this name. So I believe that this is what she's talking about. I am not confident, but this makes the most sense to me. We're looking at figures in church history like Fanny Crosby, 
Watchmen Nee, Amy Carmichael, Samuel Morris, Corey Ten Boom, Martin Luther, Jim Elliott, John Wesley. These are all significant figures in some way, shape, or form in the history of the church, but especially figures that impacted in America. Hudson Taylor, Sojourner Truth, David Livingston. So biographies of these people are nice to have if you're interested, but this is not teaching history. Like, we have to know that. Like, sure, during school, do you typically do a biography lesson as a research project, as like a side project to teach you how to research things? Sure, but these biographies do not make sense as being part of a history curriculum, maybe a side project. I hope that's what she means. But again, history is supplemental. It's not like there's a saying out there that says people who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. How are we to learn from history? <laughs> it's supplemental, uh, whatever, whatever. Who needs history? Anyway, now the last one, and it's probably the only one from the list that was sent to me that you recognize. And it is the one, the only, Prager U. Let's get into it. Prager U. This is their website. They also have multiple YouTube channels that you probably have seen videos recommended to you. Here's why I'm concerned about PragerU showing up on the curriculum list. First of all, PragerU comes from a very specific, biased point of view, in my opinion, by looking at their content. PragerU creates free educational content promoting American values. We are a nonprofit that promotes American values through short educational videos for people of all ages. American values is a very interpretive phrase. It, it could mean a lot of different things. Usually the people who are touting that phrase think it means something very conservative. There is a alt-right. So let's just take a look at what kind of videos you can find on PragerU. We have such gemstones as America's new slave trade. So right off the bat, we have a white man saying something ignorant. We have a couple of videos that are pissed about Linda B. Johnson. Should men be allowed in women's sports, trans women versus real women? So that's transphobia on display. What happened to America? Today is America, chaos, division, and social unrest. I don't think that that's the state of the country, but if it is, you guys are not the ones to fix it. Yale students want to repeal the constitution. Do you think that's actually what Yale students want to do? What's stopping boys from becoming men? Are we educating or schooling? Thoughts on abortion, sin, and God's will. Freedom versus government, which side are you on? There's no way that we can live in a society and still experience freedom. Trans kids, the medical scandal. Oh my God. XX and XY are not the same. Listen, I want to say that these are just clickbaity titles and it's not actually that extreme when you actually get into the video, but I've seen a couple of these videos. It's, it's been a while, but they are very extreme, <laughs> arrogant, fear mongering, conservative ideology masked as fact and truth and freedom and patriotism. And they have these hot topics videos like, ooh, can you spot the difference between pro-Palestinian and pro-Israel protests? I wonder which one they're gonna show angry moments from and which one they're gonna show peaceful moments from. Elon Musk versus the woke mind virus because wokeness is a virus, everybody. Is anyone on the left patriotic? You can't be patriotic if you believe in same-sex marriage being okay. How to deal with transgenderism in schools, because clearly it's a problem that needs to be dealt with, right? How to repair your school's library, book bans, anybody? Parent alert, alert, parents, pay attention, something's wrong here. All of these are very fear-mongering. What happened to America? fear-mongering, or they play to the closely held conservative opinions that are the most controversial and hot button in society right now. Being conservative in Hollywood, I'm such an outcast because I'm conservative and Hollywood is so sinful. Please, I'm such a hero and a martyr for my country and my ideology and my faith. Clap for me, clap for me. At best, these are opinion pieces and they are extremely biased. They're not particularly based in, in fact, like this one, why social emotional learning is bad for children's mental health. 
What are you talking about? Do you even know what social emotional learning is? The left cares more about race than class. I wonder if this man knows what the word intersectional means. And then there's a bunch of religious stuff thrown in here as well. So it's this very weird, like alt-right mentality coming through on your own time feel free to look at some of these videos. I'm telling you what I experienced watching them. These thumbnails are exactly what the videos are like. PragerU is now in South Carolina schools. South Carolina's Department of Education has integrated PragerU Kids, Civics, Financial Literacy, and other resources into its official learning portal, now accessible to educators across the state. This partnership broadens the range of K-12 social studies materials, offering teachers and students engaging videos, worksheets, lesson plans, and books that celebrate America's rich history, values, and founding principles. I bet one of the founding principles they're promoting is that America was a Christian nation, which I disagree with because that's not what the constitution says. The fact that this channel and this mindset are accepted as curriculum in the state of South Carolina recently is laughable because it's a bunch of opinion commentary pieces. Secondly, the fact that they make kids videos highly disturbs me. The latest kids videos, the visionary of modern Israel, South Africa, Luazi's hard lesson. I wonder if that has to do with segregation in South Africa and apartheid. I wonder how PragerU addresses that subject in a child-friendly format. Are you fucking joking me? We have the 12 tribes of Israel tree. So clearly we are coming from a religious perspective here. Some of it is very trades and business based. We're learning about side hustles, selling Hot Wheels for cold, hard cash. Let's meet a teacher. Let's meet a garbage collector. How to get a summer job, how to succeed in your summer job, how to present yourself professionally. I wonder if that has any latent racism in it. Some of it is just about like kind of non-threatening stuff. How to be truly happy. This thumbnail shows the white kid being happy and the black kid eating pizza and having a frowny face. I'm so sorry. Since when is eating pizza a sign that you're not happy? Those look like two happy people to me, but they put a sad face <laughs> on the guy eating pizza. I don't understand. Around the world. Way wants to stay free. Sofia survives the border in Colombia. And let's note how they describe this around the world playlist. Global issues that teach middle and high school kids what makes America unique. To me, it looks more like American elitism as they point out all the problems with all these other countries. Remember, these videos are coming in as curriculum, not only to this homeschool program that Raw Beauty Christie is sending her son to, but also the state of South Carolina in general. <sighs> The stereotypes that are promoted just in that framing of these little videos. So obviously there's a bias here, a very clear bias. I am concerned. If you live in South Carolina, maybe write a congressperson and just say, hey, where are we really doing this? Because it's a bad idea, you know? There are ways to discuss a topic in a well-rounded manner. You can say conservatives think this, moderates think this, liberals think this. This is where there are contradictions or conflicts between those different points of view. What do you think? It's not that you never have to mention conservative or liberal or moderate values. It's that you shouldn't choose just one and market it so hard, especially with this like fear mongering approach. And especially like looking at the, the videos that were available to the little kids, you get kids interested in your channel on the most kind of non-controversial, simple, wholesome. This is the tale of the ugly duckling. Let's meet a teacher. Let's meet a garbage collector, whatever. They get to know you. They get to know your channel. They get interested. And then you start the indoctrination afterward. For people who are so anti-indoctrination, they sure know how to do it pretty well. If you aren't convinced that it is a <laughs> vehicle for alt-right propaganda, then I encourage you, take some time on their YouTube channel, watch a couple of videos, you'll find out real quick. Moral of the story is PragerU is extremely biased. It is not a good source of curriculum. Curriculum should be education focused, not propaganda. These are a lot of opinions and interpretations, not historical facts. And this is what was confirmed to me that is used as a resource for Katie's homeschool. Wow, wowie wow. So what have we learned from this look at the curriculum for the school that Katie is teaching 
on Rob Beauty Christie's property that Rob Beauty Christie is sending her son to in hopes that he will be trained up in the way he should go, just as any good Christian mother will. Well, first of all, it tells me that she definitely is Christian, conservative, fundy, evangelical. That was a common theme throughout all of these resources, all of these homeschool curriculums have Christianity either at the center or very involved, like with PragerU. I wouldn't say that Christianity is necessarily the center of it, but it's in, in the top three themes. Secondly, the two curriculum resources that we looked at, The Good and the Beautiful and Gather Round, are not what I would consider um, up to snuff. The Good and the Beautiful has at least some review of some of the units that they offer, but it's not all of the units that go through that review. And I would prefer if those people who were doing the reviewing were actually the ones who just wrote the curriculum to begin with. Gather Round talked a lot on their website about a conflict that they were in because they didn't source their shit properly. And they were like, well, you know, I understand that you might be concerned about it, but like I sourced it enough for me as far as I'm concerned. And I asked God to make sure that I was telling the truth. So um, really it's on God at the end of the day. And it matters that the person who started Gather Round has no degrees. I think she and her husband write all of that curriculum. And the person who started The Good and the Beautiful has a degree in English and has done professional writing, but she does not have an education degree. There can be homeschool curriculum resources that are just as robust and has just as strong academics, according to Good and the Beautiful, as a public school curriculum. However, these are not those curriculums, in my opinion. And it worries me that like, this is how low the bar is for the purpose of it being a Christian education, a conservative education, because God forbid the liberals infect their minds and make them trans. You're so concerned about that thing that's not happening that you're willing to give your kid a lower quality education. It also teaches me that as much as Christy wants to say that she values her kid and, and everything, um, the truth of the matter is that she values her biases more. And of course, there's all the red flags that we talked about in the timeline leading up to this moment, as well as in this curriculum, it's anti-LGBTQ. The Good and the Beautiful website talked about kids embracing their God-given identities, so that means anti-trans. In my opinion, I'm reading that. PragerU is very openly anti-trans. I didn't see it really talked about on the Gather Round website, but I can just assume, just based on the language of everything that was written there. All this to say, we're swimming in red flags at this point of the stuff that Christy believes her son should learn. Therefore, it reflects that this is what Christy believes. And it's disappointing and it's sad and it's bigotry and it's disgusting at a certain point. So that's what I found. That was the result of my sleuthing, everybody. I hope this has been helpful or informative. I hope that this has provided some closure for some people who might be still wondering. I think if there was any question left for anybody, this answers it. I haven't been watching Robbie D. Christie for a while. Um, I would love her to come out and explain herself, but I don't think that she needs to now, you know, take this for what it is. If it looks like a red flag to you, it probably is. This is here to inform the audience since apparently Christy is not going to, and I hope that you did find it informative. Let me know what you think about all this in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a like, share it with a friend, subscribe to my channel, set your notifications to all because I'm starting my new job and things are going to be wild for a little while here. Thank you so much to Upper Room Family Learning Cooperative for responding to my email and letting me know what curriculum you use so that I could assess whether or not I want to send my kids there. And I don't. I don't want to send my imaginary kids to your school to learn from this god-awful curriculum from a woman who doesn't know how to use commas and another woman who described literature as good. I hope you reassess the standards of quality that you have for your curriculum that is used at your school. Maybe try something, anything, anything else that has like some people with education degrees writing it. There's got to be something out there. I believe in you. I got to go. I hope I see you again soon. I'm so happy you're here. I want you to still be around uh, the next time I'm able to post something. Here's hoping I'll see you again soon. Until then, peace be with you always. Bye.